Hey guys, we've heard about LLMs, which are large language models, but now we have something called as SLMs or small language models. Microsoft just released Phi3, a highly cost-effective yet capable SLM. And according to Microsoft, it outperforms larger models in many tasks like language reasoning, coding, maths. And from my tests, I've found that many of these claims are true. The model is actually quite accurate and I gave it a few linear equations to solve. That would easily confuse models like GPT 3.5, but Phi3 was able to solve them. Now, this doesn't mean that Phi3 is better than GPT 3.5 in all use cases, because there is a significant size difference. However, it is better in the use cases mentioned on the blog. In today's video, we will be working with Phi3 Mini, which is available on Azure AI Studio, Hugging Face, and Olama. So I'll take you through a Google Colab file, where we will test this model out. We will make it solve a linear equation, and then we will make it do something interesting. We will generate audio files by connecting it with the Whisper AI model, which is really good at text-to-speech generation. So it's going to be quite exciting. Make sure you stick till the end of this video, because the code you'll see here, if you understand it well, you can use it in other projects. Anyway, the link of the file will be in the description of this video. So let's get started. First, we install the Python package Accelerate. It's used to speed up numerical computations, especially when dealing with libraries like NumPy and PyTorch. Then we install Gradio, a library that simplifies creating web interfaces for machine learning models. It allows us to quickly create UIs for our models to interact with them easily. Then we install version 0.25.1 of PyDub, a popular library for manipulating audio files. It provides easy to use methods for tasks like converting between different audio formats, extracting audio from video files, and applying effects to audio. As you know, we will be working with text-to-speech, so this library will be very helpful for us later in this project. Then we install the Python package HTTS. So HTTS is a text-to-speech library that provides high-quality, natural-sounding speech synthesis. Then we install Whisper by OpenAI, which is a library for generating text in the style of a given prompt using OpenAI's GPT models. It's particularly useful for generating natural language text based on a given context. Then we install FFMPEG, a powerful multimedia processing tool that can decode, encode, transcode, mux, demux, stream, filter, and play almost any type of audio or video file. Then we add the directory slash user slash lib64 NVIDIA to the list of directories that are searched for shared libraries. This directory will contain libraries related to NVIDIA GPUs. The command then runs ldconfig, which updates the cache of shared libraries, so the changes take effect immediately. This will be useful when dealing with CUDA libraries for GPU acceleration. Then we import the PyTorch library, which is a popular open source machine learning library used primarily for tasks such as natural language processing, computer vision, and deep learning. Then we import some modules from Transformers library. The auto model for causal LM class is used for loading pre-trained transformer models, specifically designed for autoregressive language generation tasks. These models can generate text sequentially, one token at a time, given a starting prompt. The auto tokenizer class is used for tokenizing text inputs so that they can be processed by transformer-based models it automatically selects the appropriate tokenizer for the specified pre-trained model. The pipeline function creates a simple pipeline for running inference on a pre-trained model. Depending on the arguments provided, it can handle various NLP tasks such as text generation, text classification, named entity recognition, etc. This line sets the seed for random number generation of PyTorch's random module. This ensures that the random operations performed by PyTorch, such as weight initialization and data shuffling, will produce the same results each time the code is run. Setting a fixed seed is useful for reproducibility in machine learning experiments. This line loads a pre-trained autoregressive language model from the Hugging Face model hub using the from pre-trained method. We're loading the Phi3 model here, obviously, and for this, we've used the auto model for causal LLM library we imported earlier. Device map is equal to CUDA, tells the library to map the model to the GPU if available. CUDA refers to NVIDIA GPUs, which the CUDA library supports. The torch dtype auto parameter automatically selects the appropriate data type for the model's weights which optimizes performance and memory usage. Trust remote code is equal to true allows the execution of custom code included with the model, which might be necessary for some models to function correctly. This option should be used with caution and only with trusted sources, as it can execute arbitrary code. Then we set our system messages, user and assistant messages. Notice the last one, which is a linear equation. This is the one that the LLM will try and solve. Then we create our pipeline and set it to the text generation task, passing our Phi3 model and our tokenizer. Then we set our generation arguments, like the maximum number of tokens to be consumed for the output, the temperature, and so on. And we pass the messages and generation arguments in the pipeline and store the result in the output variable, which we then print on the next line. 
And in the printed output, we can see the solution to our linear equation. And not surprisingly, this is the correct solution for the equation. Then I used my hugging face token and stored it in the environment variable. For security reasons, I've removed my person token. Make sure to change this to your own token before you run this file. Then I'm loading the Whisper model that'll help us create audio files. And in the next cell, we have some logic to help us generate text-to-speech files. I'm using the calculate rate string function to adjust the speed of the text-to-speech output. The make chunks function splits the input text into chunks based on sentences. And if you notice in this function, we have set the language to English and filtered out empty and quote only sentences. The TDS file name function helps us in generating a file name for the generated audio file. And the way it does this is by processing the text to create a valid file name by truncating, converting to lowercase, replacing spaces with underscores and appending a random string. The merge audio files function uses the pydub library we imported right at the top to concatenate multiple audio files into one. Then the edge free TTS function converts chunks of text to speech and merges the resulting audio files. It does this by processing each text chunk with Microsoft's edge TTS command, then merges the audio files if there are multiple chunks. It takes in chunks list, which is a list of text chunks to be converted to speech. Speed, which is the speed adjustment for the TTS output. Voice name, which is the name of the TTS voice to be used. And save path is the path where the final audio will be saved. The function has an if and else statement. If chunks list has more than one element, it indicates that the text is split into multiple parts. Then we create a directory slash content slash edge TTS voice to store temporary audio files. Then we iterate over each chunk in chunks list and convert it to speech using the edge TTS command line tool. For each chunk, an audio file is saved in slash content slash HTTS voice with a unique index. If the command fails, it prints an error message for the failed chunk. And after processing all the chunks, it merges the individual audio files into one using the merge audio files function and saves the result at save path. Else, if chunks list contains only one element, it directly converts this single chunk to speech and saves the audio file at save path. If the command fails, it prints an error message for the failed text. Then comes the interesting part where we are setting various arguments. We are setting the text, language to be used, the gender of the voice, which is female, the voice to be used, which is area neutral, at the speed and so on. Long sentence is a Boolean flag that is set to true if the length of the input text is 600 characters or more. Otherwise, it is set to false. Save path is the path where the generated audio file will be saved. Then we're simply selecting the voice based on gender. If it's male, we will select Christopher Neural in US accent. And if it's female, we will pass the already set value which we had previously set to area neural. Then we check for the translate text flag and set the value of the input text to text. Then we're checking for flags like long sentence and translate text and simply calling the make chunks function defined at the top of the cell. We already know what that function does and you get back the text in chunks in the chunks list variable. Now we've done quite a lot of groundwork to help us work with text and now we have to worry about how to display the audio file in Colab and how to generate the audio and so on. So the next bit of code is for that. From ipython.display we import clear output which helps us clear the output display and we import audio which will help us play audio files in a Jupyter Notebook environment. Since Colab is a Jupyter Notebook environment, this will work for us. We've been working with file paths and that comes under the OS module which we had imported at the beginning of this file. So using OS we check if slash content slash audio folder doesn't exist and we will create it. This is where we will store our audio files. Then we have our function to generate a random name for our audio file. We use UUID for this along with the mp3 extension. The talk function is what handles the text to speech conversion process. We start the function off by defining all the variables we will need from outside this function using the keyword global. And then we're calling all the functions we have created earlier like the make chunks function, the random audio name generate function and the edge free TTS function. Finally, we call the talk function and the audio function. In the output, we pass the text, this is Microsoft Fight 3 Mini 4K Instruct Demo. And this is the text that we will hear in the audio file. So let's listen to that. This is Microsoft Fight 3 Mini 4K Instruct Demo. All right, now we're going to leverage all that we've built to generate more audio files. In the next cell, you will see some code with messages, pipeline, and generation arguments. And the Fight TTS Demo function, we're calling the Fight Demo and talk functions. Then we cleared the output, print phi3 response, and we can see it in the output below outside the cell. You can also see the display function, which is going to display the audio file generated in the output. We also pass the user question, which is briefly explain the Riemann hypothesis. And the LLM is going to answer that question and the audio file will be generated for the same. So let's hear the output. The Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture in mathematics proposed by Bernhard Riemann in 1859. It concerns the distribution of the zeros of the Riemann zeta function, a complex function defined for complex numbers with a real part greater than zero. The hypothesis posits that all non-trivial zeros of this function, zeros that are not negative even integers, lie on the critical line, 
where the real part of the complex number is one half. This conjecture is significant because it's deeply connected to the distribution of prime numbers, and proving it would have profound implications for number theory and related fields. Despite extensive research, the Riemann hypothesis remains unproven to this day. Okay, now using the same logic, we have two more examples below. We ask it to explain string theory to an elementary school student in one paragraph, and we also ask it to write a short story just like William Shakespeare. Let's listen to both the examples. String theory is like a giant cosmic orchestra where tiny strings, much smaller than anything we can see, play different notes to create everything in the universe, from stars to people. In Fair Verona, where we lay our scene, two star-crossed lovers, Romeo and Juliet, bound by love's sweet chain, didst find themselves in a tempest of fate's design. With hearts entwined in passion's flame, they sought solace in the moon's pale light, their whispered vows a secret kept from Montague's spite and Capulet's strife. Yet, in haste and sorrow's grip, a tragic end was met, for Cupid's arrow, once struck, could not be undone, and thus, in death's cold embrace, their love did bloom eternal, uniting feuding houses in a silent, sorrowful tune. Alright, I hope this video was fun, and to think such a small model is capable of such accurate results makes you wonder where exactly the world is headed. Models will keep getting smaller while staying highly accurate, and we will have better architectures, and even more innovation in fields like quantization and parameter offloading to make the models more efficient with compute. So exciting times to be alive. Now I want to take a moment for the sponsor of this video, which is you. Yes, you heard it right. You are the sponsor of this video. Now, I don't do YouTube as a full-time profession. I have my own startup, which I'm building full-time. And that's why you haven't seen any partnerships or sponsorships on my channel. And even in the future, only if I truly believe in something, I'll partner with them. Because I'm not dependent on this as an income stream. So I can do what I want. But what I want you to do is subscribe to this channel because the algorithm won't serve such a small channel like mine, no matter how valuable the content is. And also, I want you to share this with as many people as you can because the content is completely free and you can benefit someone a lot by sharing this free resource. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out other playlists on this channel like the LLM Concepts playlist, 50 Rush Projects playlist, the 55 Golang Projects playlist, the Technology Architecture playlist and the System Design playlist. I'll see you in the next video.